everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 16. Last time, we completed the In Your Heart Shall Burn quest, and that signified the end of kind of like the first act of Dragon Age Inquisition, because there have been some significant changes. Uh, we are now in Skyhold. Haven was destroyed, assaulted and then destroyed, and... We have survived, and many others have, as we've all begun the long pilgrimage to, to Skyhold. Uh, Solus helped direct us here, and then we got the big, massive villain reveal. Corypheus has returned. And what better way to gather intel and understanding about Corypheus than to directly talk with people who were involved with the Legacy DLC of Dragon Age 2. Uh, I am, it's like I'm seeing a celebrity. I'm seeing my character from Dragon Age 2. And it was just so cool to like have a conversation with like your past character. Like, have there ever been games that have done that before? Like where you've created or had your own playable character and then in like a future title, like they show up and you can interact with them. Nothing that I've played, I think, has ever done something like that. And I just think that that's so amazing that a character that you spent so much time with and like developing and putting like a lot of, you know, your own thoughts and feelings into with our, our chuckles, our humorous hawk. And he comes back and then we can like have an actual conversation with him. It was just such a special little surprise because as soon as we've got Corypheus, we're like dealing with this. We're like, how do we sort this out? How do we learn about this guy and what's going on? And I'm like, well, Varric was there and he's in our party and there were other people who were also involved. So it was really nice of the game to like waste no time in being like, look, we can do this. Like... <laughs> Just by the way, like, we'll immediately, like, answer that question for you instead of keeping you in suspense. And Hawk has arrived <laughs> straight away <laughs> for you to have a talk to. It's just so cool. So we'll continue walking through uh, Skyhold. So it's a lovely, brisk morning. Very, very cold. I wish I could change my outfit to something a little more warm. Uh, but apparently when we're walking in Skyhold, we have to wear our... Um, whatever this outfit is that's okay maybe i can find my quarters somewhere uh if it's not all like destroyed in ruins and uh maybe i can change my outfit like mass effect that's what i'm kind of hoping for uh but we're gonna complete or not complete but i guess follow up on this next step of from the ashes because uh we had our conversation with varak and hawk on the battlements here and then a Josephine requires attention in the antechamber as well. So we're going to do that. But this is going to be an episode uh, that is definitely focused on getting to know Skyhold. We're going to walk around this place. We're going to get familiar with it. There's a lot of characters sat around everywhere. People are littering their mugs on the floor for me to trip over. It's So it's going to be a whole thing. Um, it's kind of interesting at the moment because I guess everyone's just only just arrived so i'm not sure if this is where characters are going to permanently sit or whether they'll move around the place because i can't really imagine that we're just going to have like our companions just kind of displaced standing in a field doing nothing <laughs> uh the whole time i imagine that they might find a place to get more comfortable as uh this place gets cleaned up a little because there's a lot of, like, passageways and rooms that are just rubble-filled at the moment. So we'll definitely need to clean that up. Now, if we go this way, we can speak to Josephine. She is right outside, um, right outside of the war room. And it looks like Varric is here now. He's riding hard in Hightown. Battling the demons of paperwork. That's a fight nobody walks away from clean. You have no idea the number of times I've almost been killed by bills of lading. I've been meaning to come talk to you anyhow. I never officially joined the Inquisition. I don't know how to do this. Uh, 
disciplehood thing. I'm a businessman. Never really followed a chosen one before. Just be my friend. What if I want you to be more than my friend, Varric? Where's the romance option? Why is he not romanceable? I don't need a disciple. I need a friend. If you knew how intimidating you are, you wouldn't make it sound so simple. You just don't know what you are to the people out there. The Herald of Andraste is a symbol bigger than any of us. What am I to you, then? None of this shit makes any sense to me. Is this the end of the world? Did Andraste send you through the breach? I have no idea. You heard the crowd singing after Haven was attacked? Please don't tell me you're going to burst into song now. Don't worry, I'm not that cruel. I should probably get back to work. Unless, uh, you up for a game of Wicked Grace? Ooh. What's that? Oh, okay, it's a, it's a fade to black. I love it. Um, why can't I witness the game happen on this table? He set it up and everything. I love that he's just like, unless you want to play a game? <laughs> you want to play a game with me? Looking for someone to talk your ear off? I think I can oblige. <laughs> um, I wonder if this updates now with like questions about Hawk, now that we've spoken with him. I read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Never mind. Carry on. Carry on. Looking for someone to talk your ear off? I think I can oblige. Uh, well, it looks like we can go into Corypheus. Personal question, and I guess let's discuss the Inquisition. So tell me about Corypheus. What can you tell me about this Corypheus? I'm not exactly an expert, but ask away and I'll answer what I can. How did you first encounter him? A few years back, I was dealing with some trouble from a Carter clan that went rogue. They were sending assassins after the Hawk family. We tracked them to a rune in the Vimarks. It turned out to be a trap. Once you went far enough into the rune, there was a magic barrier that kept you from going back. The whole thing was a prison the Grey Wardens were using to hold what they thought was a powerful darkspawn. <laughs> I've never heard of Wardens locking up darkspawn. Why wouldn't they just kill him and be done with it? I don't think they could. From what we saw in there, Corypheus can control Wardens somehow. They couldn't attack him. The Wardens locked him up because there was nothing else they could do. He looks like some sort of blighted creature, but he speaks. What is he exactly? The Wardens who imprisoned him thought he was just a darkspawn. But you heard him ranting. He claims he's a Magister. One who assaulted the Golden City, what, more than a thousand years ago? It seems crazy, but if he's telling the truth, he's one of the people who caused the blights. I love that, like, one of the main villains that we're dealing with in, like, Dragon Age now, instead of being, like, such a significant, you know, character for just a DLC, is big enough to be an actual main game villain. It's, it's so fitting, especially if all of this is true, then it is indeed... You know, the reason for all of these, all of these blights so far. You and Hawk both said before he was supposed to be dead. He was dead. We killed him. The only way for us to escape the prison Corypheus was trapped in was to go through him. We weren't going to just leave the door to his prison open behind us and hope he was dead. We made sure. So remember when, for those of you that have watched Dragon Age 2 and my legacy episode... I, there's that there's that Grey Warden who went down to face the calling. Uh, Lari Larius, I think his name was. That's the name that's coming to my brain right now. Larius, I think. And I specifically remember his, like, he sounded different. And then we asked him why he sounds so different. And he said he it's because he could no longer hear Corypheus's song. And then he walks away, 
but like with a weird smirk. And I was like, why is this evil? And it seems that with that, that you kind of move away from, you're like, oh, that feels weird and strange. And then it, it kind of makes so much more sense now in Inquisition. You go, oh, he didn't stop hearing the call. There must have been some sort of way that he survived through him somehow, but then still has retained his physical form, even though we saw that he was like dead on the ground, which is a very interesting thing. But that's the only real sort of thing or clue to his survival is this Grey Warden that was like evil <laughs> or sounded evil. And then I think there's like a, a line that he says which I think could be interpreted um, in that kind of way as well. Then what well, goes off to do evil things in the background leading up to this game, I suppose. All right. I think that's enough about Corypheus. No problem. What can I do for you, Inquisitor? It's a shame that there's like sometimes multiple investigation options that it seems you can't go through all of them. <laughs> it goes into a different thing and then it disappears. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Okay. Because the Inquisition one's in there that's just been moved, so nothing new. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Thanks, Varric. <laughs> I've got a minute if you need something. What are your thoughts on the Inquisition? You might want to keep an eye on Liliana. At this point, I think her secrets have secrets. Someone needs to get her out of the fortress for a while. Take a walk or something. She's starting to twitch. <laughs> what do you think of Leliana's work? Do you want to know what the Arashak had for breakfast this morning? I think she can tell you. What do you think of our general? He needs more to do. Honestly, right now he spends all day cleaning his armor with a lost puppy look on his face. <laughs> How do you think Josephine is handling the job of ambassador? If this Inquisition thing doesn't work out, I may hire her to deal with the Merchants Guild. She'd own them before breakfast. Good to know. Back to work, then. Okay, thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's a bit of a miserable-looking uh, main hall here, isn't it? Someone needs to clean this up. And I keep going to this door. I don't know why. <laughs> I keep going to the wrong door. That's cool, and that's very that's very interesting. I'm wondering, like, because I'm looking at like the artwork on walls and stuff, and I guess it's it's all would have been here uh, over time since the very beginning. Now you get a better look at like what this represents here. Wonder if we'll get some uh, information on. I well, I mean, we will, but I'm just waiting to get some more information on this place. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes and to the death. The Court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. I love that these two just appear out of nowhere. They just make no sound. They're just like, Poof, here we are. Exactly what do you mean? How is it more dangerous than usual? The Empress is in the middle of a civil war. Her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard, seeks to take her throne by force. Leliana reports that a group of elves has been sabotaging both armies, drawing out the hostilities. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Thedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Céline is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Norlay will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. Duke Gaspard is the guy that we put in place, right? That's the dude that we literally chose. And now he's being a problem? Classic. Does that dialogue change if we put someone else in power instead? 
Or is Duke Gaspard always going to be an issue regardless? Does Celine know about the threats against her? Can we send word? I've sent messages to the Empress, but it's impossible to know if she's received them. I'll arrange for an invitation at your discretion, Inquisitor. Nice. The Elysian Civil War. Wicked eyes and wicked hearts. Oh my god. Okay. Wait. Does that mean... Hang on. Um, oh my god. Does that mean we're gonna go... Uh, to, we're gonna go to like the, the, the Winter Palace here. Are we going to witness like the the Orlesian stupid little like titles rattle off the roll call situation? Do I get to make up my own title? I don't know what I would say. <laughs> that would be cool. Okay, we have characters. I got a, we got some more stuff in here actually. The champion of Kirkwall. I like that they use the map of Kirkwall. And then it's just like a hawk with its... That's a really... That's a very strange way to draw a hawk. You got like its uh, talons and then the, the head right there, but it looks very strange. The champion of Kirkwall. I've heard the name Hawk on several lips this week. Many of us blamed the champion for the events in Kirkwall, which sparked a war and hurled all Thetis into chaos. But can we truly fault Hawk for what he did? Here was a poor refugee from Ferelden who came to the Free Marchers fleeing the Blight. Coming from a family of apostates, Hawk must have spent his life hiding from Templars, hearing about the abuses to which mages under the care of the Circle were subjected. Make no mistake, there were abuses. We will never find a peaceful solution to this conflict until we admit that we were partially responsible. Imagine how it must have been for Hawk when he rose to prominence for his role in ending the Canari threat of the 34th year of the Dragon Age. From refugee to champion of Kirkwall, Hawk's position gave him power and influence. Nothing could touch him. Hawk always had sympathy for mages and perhaps wished to do more for them. Are the champion's actions during the mage uprising so hard to understand, given all I have said? Following the destruction of the Chantry, Knight Commander Meredith invoked the right of annulment and called for the execution of every mage in Kirkwall. It was not right. Another injustice added to an already lengthy list. Hawk knew it and stood against her. He put himself between the Templars and the mages they sought to destroy and became a legend. Even though he later disappeared, fleeing Kirkwall and the Chantry's justice, what happened in Kirkwall that day changed Thetis forever. By defying Meredith and our order, Hawk became a beacon for the Mage Rebellion that gave the Mages hope, rallied them, they fought back, and here we now stand on the eve of the Divine Conclave, seeking peace before their rebellion destroys us all. Knight Commander Marteau of Montsimard speaking to Templars attending the Divine Conclave. Something I really, really love about the Hawk interaction is the way he talks about Isabella is so in line with exactly how I viewed that relationship as well, because the relationship in Dragon Age 2, we had like a little fling and it never like proceeded into like the full romance, but I liked how that was a, a thing between us. And then she came back with the, you know, the Canari tome and... We had, we had good banter, like, back and forth throughout, like, the rest of the game, which was so much fun. And then in Dragon Age Keep, I set it so that we did have that romance still because I, it just felt, like, fitting that we would go off and do that thing. We'd go out in the ocean together. And then I really like how, how a hawk addresses, like, Isabella being off having fun, but hopefully not too much fun. And it just it feels very consistent. And I really appreciate that. It's very cool. Um, creatures. The Red Templar Foot Soldier, which uh, we've already read, so that's okay. Uh, groups. The Orlesian Civil War. When Grand Duke Gaspard attacked Empress Celine of Orlais in an attempt to claim the throne, we assumed business across the country would suffer greatly. To counter propaganda suggesting she was overly tolerant of the elves, Selene was drawn to crush an elven uprising in Harlem Sheral, and Gaspard's attack there destroyed her forces and cut her off from Valrio. 
She escaped back to the Orlesian capital with a hundred mad stories explaining how, at which point we started closing down the family shops, expecting Gaspard's army to carve a bloody path through the heartlands and up north towards cities loyal to Selene. Instead, the humans have been downright reasonable. We made a killing on furs and silver in Valrio as Gaspard's hold on southern Orlais cut off incoming trade goods from Ferelden. The nobles in Montfort and Valchevin also brought up violets, as though their touch killed a darkspawn. Apparently, Selene declared that wearing purple flowers was a way for humans to show their loyalty to her. In Ferelden, half the cities would be on fire, but in Orlais, the nobles make jokes, and the merchants just keep peddling their wares while Gaspard and Selene's armies clash in the dales. The only people really suffering are the peasants, but then... That's true enough anyway. Send extra guards on the next shipment, but save the lyrium for Ferelden. Their family's doing good business here as it is. A letter from Dernal Harrick, dwarven merchant, to his family in Ostwick. Interesting. Okay. Inquisitor, I was just inspecting our new headquarters. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we are to receive any visitors of distinction. Mm -hmm. It certainly wouldn't do for the Inquisition to appear... overly shabby. We've only just now convinced everyone we are precisely what Thedas requires. The mages are showing great trust in you. They need to feel safe here. After that battle with Corypheus, how could anyone not feel perfectly safe? I can't stop dwelling on the day he attacked our camp. Do you know who first leapt to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first blast of fire. So many people turned to ash. We lost far too many good people to that monster. I'm sure they'll find rest with the Maker. Well, before I return to my duties, allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lady. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. Ooh. Would you care to go for a stroll? <laughs> a week's worth of bathing? Okay. <laughs> what? Hmm. Hmm. I'd be delighted if you could conjure up a marble bath within the next hour. I'll attempt to add that to the list. Okay. We'll be, we'll be sensible. Inquisitor, is it true? Is the mark on your hand magic cast by Corypheus? Corypheus claimed it's a spell gone wrong. I wanted to think it was a blessing. A sign the Maker was returning to his creation. How credulous of me. The Anchor's nothing more special than a misfired spell. At least you had the good fortune to take it from Corypheus. Does it hurt? The anchor, that is. Only when I laugh. <laughs> Very good, Inquisitor. Very good, Inquisitor. Keep being funny. A situation requires your attention, Inquisitor. Noble Chantry loyalists in the city of Jader are spreading accusations that you're responsible for the Divine's death. They're unusually organized. I recommend we send people to Jader to deal with the matter. We need some propaganda. Will anyone even believe me if I claim I didn't kill the Divine? Perhaps if they learn about your heroics. We should emphasize how you stopped the breach devouring the sky. Even in Jader, it may win you a few admirers. What does the nobility gain by saying I murdered Justinia? A scapegoat to begin with. But I wonder if the Grand Clerics are at work. Those immediately eligible to be Divine died at the Conclave. The ones remaining were not as favored. They may look upon you as a rival for influence. Let's send some ambassadors to convince Jada I'm not a monster in disguise. Excellent. I believe there is much to be gained by winning them over. 
Okay, so there's my influence. Good day to you. There we go. What do the people make of us? We've gathered many favors among the nobility. They will be gently reminded of this. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? You may see the Countess Lutetia in the halls. A lovely woman, but her conversation sent towards the unusual. She's the patron of Orlais' greatest naturalists. The Countess's particular passion is collecting butterflies. That doesn't sound unusual. She goes into great detail about preserving them. Mm. It seems to involve large amounts of chemicals and pins. That's cool. She's got herself an insect wall. I like that a lot. Uh, so we had to go through a few sessions with Josephine there before we could actually get to the proper dialogue. All right. Oh, there's a lot to do. Okay. I don't even want to look at the war table right now because it's just a lot to do. But I need to send them on missions because they're all on timers. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's go to the... Let's do this. I need to put some people on jobs. I can't let myself get overwhelmed to ignore it completely. I have to do it. Oh, there's too many things on this on this board. Okay. Can we trim this down a bit? All right, improve stability. We have sent our soldiers to the most troubled areas. We've received numerous letters of gratitude from people in Ferelden and Orlais. We are proving that trust in the Inquisition will be rewarded. An ally from Starkhaven. I look forward to future collaboration with the Inquisition. Please accept this gift from the Vale family's coffers. May, be, may it be put toward relief efforts in Haven. In Andraste's love, Prince Sebastian. Okay. Ahem. <clears throat> And then, did we put Leliana on a job somewhere? Or not? Alright, well I guess these open up some areas, I think. The ones that cost power open up new places to explore. So let's have a look here. Investigate the Exalted Plains. Cullen, our spies looked into the breakdown of contact between Valerio and Imperial Army forces in the Dales. Troops on both sides agreed to cease hostilities, then retreated to their camps to await the outcome of peace talks. What occurred after the withdrawal is a mystery. The last communique from Gaspard's marshal reported a rash of desertions. Have they found anyone alive? Excavation is slow, as you can imagine. Thanks for talking. After that, silence. I agree that this warrants further investigation. Do what you will, and my agents will lend support. All right. We can march soldiers into the exalted plains and position scouts in strategic areas. If lines of communication are down, we must be prepared for anything. Off you go. We have established an outpost in the Exalted Plains. Lead Scout Harding is en route and awaiting further orders. Oh, and that just opened, that opens up a new thing to do. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. More stuff to do. Make contact in the Emerald Graves. We have been contacted by a Fairbanks who says he has information of value to the Inquisition. He offers a trade, the information, in exchange for the Inquisition's help in eliminating a dangerous rebel band calling themselves the Freemen of the Dales. There have been reported sightings of these rebels all over the Dales, where they have caused significant problems for Elysian troops. Uprooting them could be a good move for us. First, let us see what Fairbanks has to say. He is hiding out somewhere in the Emerald Graves, a legendary Dalish forest. My spies report that he is well acquainted with the area and its terrain. He could prove a useful asset if we choose to trust him. At your word, I'll send emissaries to meet with Fairbanks, along with hidden agents to watch him. Cool. Let's do that. Okay. Lead Scout Harding made contact with Fairbanks and his men in the Emerald Graves and had run in with the rebel freemen of the Dales. They are as violent as we've been led to believe. As for Fairbanks, Harding was unable to coax much from him. He will only share what he knows with the Herald of Andraste, it seems. Fairbanks is holding his information close to his chest. I wonder if it might relate to something bigger than just the freemen of the Dales. If there is a chance at all, then we must learn all we can from him. Harding has set up an outpost in the Emerald Graves. Be careful, Inquisitor. 
The forest of the graves is treacherous and home to enemies both new and ancient. Yes. Yep. Liberate Empris du Leon. 20 power. My dearest Josephine, the hills of Empris de Luon. Oh. Empress du Lion are in peril. A maidservant recently returned from visiting an uncle in Sarnia spoke of gruff helmeted men about the village's quarry and the appearance of strange red crystals in the fields close by. I suspected Red Lyria had been sent men to investigate, but the bridges leading to the area had all been destroyed. The Red Templar's handiwork, I wager. If we do not act quickly, all of the highlands may be lost. I wish I bore fairer tidings, my dear. My warmest regards to your family. I pray for the quelling of those winter winds of chaos that we may meet again in springtime. Your truest friend and ally, Edward Desjardins. This ought, this doesn't even look like a real name. It's terrible. All right, that one costs 20. That's a bit too expensive. We've got 23 power. Or we can stop Venatory activity in the west. Which is Liliana's spies have discovered orders from the Venatory's high-ranking commanders. A large number of mages are traveling westward to excavate something of great value to our cause. The Inquisition must find whatever its enemies are searching for. The region is vast, but Liliana is ready to put her network to use in tracking down Corypheus's minions. The Venatory are sending some of their best scholars into the wilderness. Let us discover precisely where they're heading. Oh. Uh, investigating the western approach. Commander Cullen, scouts are reporting a number of travelers entering the western approach. Surprising, since the place is a blighted desert with no trade routes. More surprising, no one is leaving. It bears investigating. Knight Captain Rylan. Immediate deployment of troops to secure a position over there. Okay. And then over in Ferelden, have we got things that need... Oh yes, I've got to protect my clan, don't I? Oh, that's Alistair. Right. I almost freaked the fuck out. Because I was like, THE Warden? Wait a second. Oh, my heart just jumped out of my chest. Okay. Alistair. Right. Hawk has revealed that Corypheus can influence the minds of Grey Wardens. If the Darkspawn brings them under his sway, he'll command a legion of highly skilled warriors. The Inquisition must hunt down Hawk's Grey Warden ally hiding in Crestwood to learn about the other Wardens' plans. No one has travelled to or from Crestwood since the breach, and Leliana will send her fastest agents to discover what disaster has rendered it silent. Okay, we will ensure that a trap is not awaiting us in Crestwood. Right, I'm going to do that. We'll scout that place out. As soon as it just said, like, find the warden, though, it's like, there's only one, the warden, <laughs> and it's mine. A hastily scrawled note received by Messenger Bird. Inquisitor, Hawk's warden friend is somewhere here. Disappeared before we could talk to him. He's good. Be careful on the road. Lots of undead. People here need our help. Explain more once you're here. Harding. All right, we've got a new area. There are a lot of new areas here. Holy crap. Um, at least, at the very least, we can see that there are, like, markings for, like, normal, like, quests to do, and then we've got, um, locations also. So, investigate Frostback Basin. Minimum suggested level is 20. To Ambassador Josephine Montillier, thank you so much for your earlier correspondence. I confess it's been difficult to get those in Orlais to take this discovery seriously in light of recent events, but I am positive that scouting the Frostback Basin will yield historic discoveries beneficial to both the academic field and the Inquisition. As a staunch supporter, I am honored to be working in such great company on this historic occasion. Yours most sincerely, Professor Bram Kenrick in the University of Orlais. Nice. Well, that one's re like recommended level 20. Which actually is kind of funny because I didn't really check if these... I don't think these had a required level or anything. And if they did, I wasn't paying attention. So this gets us resources. So they're like kind of small missions to do. Rare herb embryum. So it's like if you just want like crafting resources, you can send people out to do them instead of going there and gathering it yourself, which is cool. Um, 
I'm just gonna tick off all the resources ones because they're just, you know, getting items that we can do. I assume they are repeatable, like gathering coin. Reclaiming the Mage Rebellion. Conscript for the Inquisition. Well, that settles it. We face a darkspawn magister who commands something that looks suspiciously like an archdemon. I defy anyone to tell me that this is no blight. We have Blackwall's treaties and we have cause. Thetis will require little persuasion. True. What we need is information. Grey Warden influence may loosen even the tightest lips. We need to bolster our forces. Let me conscript more soldiers. And information and conscripts are well enough, Inquisitor, but gold secures these things and more. Um, well, we've got the treaties. It used to be so much easier earlier on in the game because there was only like three things to look at. So it was easier to have a look at all of our choices before sending uh, our groups on missions. This feels like I've walked into a room and I've got like my whole crowd here going, OK, here's all of this paperwork. And it's just like this huge leaning tower of paperwork. Uh, feel free to choose what you want to do. <laughs> the search for the hack writer. This looks like a continuation for Varric. Ruffles, first off, you play a mean hand of Wicked Grey. Secondly, the lead you dug up for me on finding this Balin Forth guy in Kirkwall is starting to show some promise. I got my editor to look around for me. She's a coterie boss, so people tell her things whether they want to or not. She tracked down the poor sod carrying the manuscripts out of Kirkwall. This is where it gets weird. The courier is a magistrate, Lord Werner Cameron. The coterie won't touch him with a 10-foot pole. Maybe you could have a polite word with him for me. Magistrate Courier, he has to be involved in something else. Let's find out what. I'm owed a few favors in the Viscount's office. I could call one in. And I have a friend in the Kirkwall Guard. She might be willing to talk to this magistrate. Is that Aveline? Well, I guess saying in the Kirkwall Guard, probably not, as Aveline's the, the captain, right? We'll take Josephine, considering it's for her. I'll have her do that. At your service. Obviously, we need to search the Hack Rider. Uh, we've got Protect Clan Lavellan. And the thing is, the second time this has come up, Protect Clan Lavellan. Darlene, I would not trouble you normally. You have enough on your shoulders fighting ancient of Magisters while representing your people. Unfortunately, the rifts that plague this land have spread chaos and fear along with them, and many seek to take advantage of it. Bandits are attacking Clan Lavellan. The raiders are well armed and heavily armored, and they come in numbers our hunters cannot match. We had settled in a small, unclaimed valley not far from Wycombe, a safe place with few rifts, but these bandits may force us to seek a new home. If your Inquisition can help, you might save our clan much hardship. Um, Josephine would say the Duke of Wycombe is an Inquisition ally. It is odd for him to let bandits so close to his city. Perhaps he could help the Dalish. These seem too powerful to be mere bandits. My skirmishers can harass their flanks and give the Dalish a chance to retreat safely while I uncover the truth. My simple band, no simple bandits would attack a Dalish camp with such force. My troops can give the Dalish much needed support. Okay. I'll have to think about that. Strike a bargain with merchant prices. Considering it says busy, I'm assuming this is Josephine only. Inquisitor, the allied merchants of the monarchy of Antiva have inquired whether they can assist us in any fashion. They could provide us with some of the finest goods in Thetis, a powerful boost to our prestige, and spread our influence north. The merchant princes will also attempt to ensnare us in contracts so convoluted we'll be internally tied to them. If we are interested, we must send our most skilled negotiators. Our diplomats are well respected, and I feel we can come out ahead of the bargain if we are prepared to commit to it. So I feel like we need Josephine available for that. Shadows over Danarum, my Lady Inquisitor. First, I feel I must apologize. When I arrived at Redcliffe Castle, things had progressed to the point where I simply wanted the rebel mages and everyone associated with them out of our lands. Now that time has passed and the breach has been sealed, I have come to learn more of what you represent, as well as the true threat you face. Of course, I speak of the Tevinter cult, which I have reason to believe has infiltrated the royal palace in Denerim. Seeing as the Inquisition knows far more about them, I would ask for your assistance in hunting down these spies. Before they do hear what they did in Redcliffe, Olaf Ferelden would be grateful. Queen and Nora. I have just the agent in mind for this. Allow me to send her to Denerim to quietly hunt down the Venatory spies. 
Send forces to aid in the manhunt. Not only should we help, but everyone should see us doing it. And Josephine's not participating anyway. Um, quietly hunt down the spies or aid in a manhunt. Um, I'm going to send Liliana to do that. Inquisitor. We'll get her to help out with that. Reclaiming the Mage Rebellion. Fiona, we got word out to everyone we could, but some cells were too remote to reach. We'll need the Inquisition to contact them, at least to let them know the Templars are gone. They are gone, right? Right? Sketch. Send a few agents with a mage from Redcliffe. Rebel mages may not believe we're not Templars. I can ask the Benorn to help contacting them. And they're likely afraid to come out of hiding. I can send a few non-Templar soldiers. You'll probably think you're Templars, though. <laughs> um... I reckon Liliana would be good for that mission. So I'll send Liliana on that one. Dorian's request. <clears throat> now that you're in charge, there's something I thought I'd bring up. There are venatory mages out there lurking in the wilderness. This comes as no surprise to you since you can't swing a dead cat without hitting one of Corypheus' minions, but these particular venatory have additional significance to myself. For one, I know them personally. I would call them friends, except that would imply I didn't want them dead, which I do. Since I have an idea of where they might be, thanks to an investigation I began before coming south, I thought we could put our heads together and track them down. At which point they would sneer something at you into winter, and you would be forced to kill them, which makes everyone happy. You for eliminating a potential threat, me for eliminating men and women too stupid and short-sighted to be permitted continued breath. They would be less happy, but who cares about them? Up to you, my Lady Inquisitor. Okay. Let us look into this carefully and quietly. We do not wish to alert the Venatory to our awareness. And if there are Venatory out there, they'll show their faces. Money. We have former Templars skilled at hunting mages. I can send them to follow Dorian's leads. Interesting. Obviously, we have a lot of reading to do with a very overwhelming war table. So I do hope you can bear with me as we look through everything that's here. Because there's, there's so much. <laughs> And even I'm I'm overwhelmed and, and just trying my best here to navigate things. Disaster in the Deep Roads has more power as well. The Inquisition has received urgent request for aid from Orzammar. Does that mean we get to go to the Orzammar or is it just the Deep Roads? A subterranean earthquake has collapsed one of their Lyrium mines and endangered several others. Even worse, tunnel seals preventing Darkspawn from overrunning the Dwarven occupied Deep Roads have crumbled, allowing hordes of the enemy to invade. Orzammar is a key provider of the Inquisition's lyrium supplies, and as such, its security is a top priority. The earthquake opened a fissure in the Storm Coast Mountains, granting direct access from the surface to the threatened region underground. Constructing a mining lift at the fissure site will permit the Inquisition to transport forces directly to where Darkspawn fighting is fiercest. Cool. Looks like we'll be able to go back to the Deep Roads again. A formal document with impeccable filigree. Power for a price. It is time. The Inquisitor commands a small kingdom. It is time to exercise the weight of her influence. They remain uninvolved and uncommitted lords and ladies, bands and arles. Where they could not be engaged with plight or passion, they can be compelled through mercenary means, but there must be a display. Make it known that the Inquisition has weight and the boons and the dispensations for the power of the powerful will be open to you. Thereafter, she need not curry influence. She can simply buy it. The esteemed Faris, the representative. Do not display. We will show your reach by simply being where it's most beneficial. A fate of your own to display the allied and powerful. And a grand march. We're to show weight. Show the legion that you command. Right. Acquire the Arcanist. Skyhold has incredible potential for runecrafting and mastercraft smithing. If only we had a gifted mind to gain full benefit. The war and the Venatory have claimed many experts. But we have located an Arcanist with great skill and a reputation for humbling First Enchanters in both Andrastian and Imperial circles. Two assassination attempts and at least one explosion have made landholders reluctant to allow her passage through their territory. It will take significant effort to bring her from Tantavale, but this Arcanist would be invaluable to the Inquisition. To bar passage, they must know she is there. They will not. Alliance can overwhelm any concern. The owners of where she will travel need only be convinced of the worth of pleasing us. And a full retinue will secure her safety across the Imperial Highway. I feel like Liliana would be good for that mission too. It sucks when there are people that are available, like, it's more suited, seemingly, for certain missions. You know? And you have to wait. 
<laughs> there were reports of darkspawn activity on the Storm Coast. While the area is sparsely populated, the darkspawn pose a significant threat to travelers as well as to Inquisition soldiers stationed on the coach. Should the darkspawn branch away from the region, villages further inland may be at risk. Um, okay, I reckon we'll just have Cullen go on this one. Inquisitor. It won't take too long. And then we can have them go out on some other ones, like protecting Clan, uh, Lavellan, and other things. All right. I'll read those later. I've, I'm, I'm doing a lot of reading. My brain is going to turn into mush soon. It's a very overwhelming war table. I kind of wish that they um, maybe eased you in a little bit more when that comes in, because that's just... That's just a lot. So, um, thank you, everybody, for uh, bearing with me. Um, I just unlocked an Inquisition perk, though, so I'll unlock another one for Liliana. So I can almost get Deft Hands Fine Tools. Um, I guess we'll get... We'll just get extra herbs with each harvest. And then I can get this one next time. Did you see the message I sent? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful. Power seems pretty easy to come by, so we'll sort that out. We'll get some more power in our uh, in our travels. Now, as I said, we're not going to be going out to any locations this episode because we've got people to talk to. So we're going to be talking with people instead. We want to see what every companion has to say and we'll get familiar with, uh, with this location of Skyhold. So, I mean, if you've guessed, and that was probably obvious considering we are 40 minutes in, uh, this there's going to be a lot of reading and dialogue in this episode. So it is very much the Mapocalypse podcast uh, reading session. Uh, so you're happy to crack open a beer or a beverage of choice, get some snacks, kick your feet up, and listen to my voice read everything I can find <laughs> in this place. The big reading episode, part whichever one, because there's probably going to be multiple of episodes like this. Request for resources on the Fade. Regarding your request, as a noted partner of the Inquisition, Lady Montillier has ensured our contacts are quick to reply. The few titles on hand accompany this letter, with the remaining en route from libraries in Valrio and surrounding. Archivist Bannon. Fade and Spirits Mysterious by Brother Ferdinand Genetivi, and Enchanter's Observations by Anonymous, The Unholy Grace, Author Unknown, On Silver Chords by First Enchanter Irving. Nice. Wisdom Failed, The Hedge Mage, collected by First Enchanter Heron. Translations of the Elilan Excavation, collected by Brother Ferdinand Genetivi. Tevinta Journeys Inward, by Archon Vias. Our Orlesian Heart, by formerly Sister Laudine. And Speaking to the Other, translation by Lady Geen. On Lyrium, a Templar's Memoir, by Sir Treus. Dalish Myth and Collected Truths Against, collected by Sister Patrine. And Elevan Dis Falsis. Triu Method Dracus, untranslated, author unknown, and there are two more pages of titles listed beneath. I like that we recognize some of these books and names, <laughs> which is cool. Okay. Hello. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. Tell me more of yourself. I'm interested in what you told me of yourself in your studies. If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. Preferably somewhere more interesting than this. Oh, ooh, okay, we get somewhere a little more comfortable. Oh, are there candles? Where are we going? The suspense. We're traveling. Wait. The fuck? Why here? 
Avon is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. Um... I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. Haven's buried under like 20 feet of snow. Also, <laughs> this is a situation that makes me regret putting Solus in like different clothing because it. <laughs> I'm just like, God damn it. And why am I wearing my pajamas? Like, and you're not. That's, that feels unfair. I'm not well dressed for this. Um, considering Haven's current status of being so far under snow, I'm assuming going somewhere more comfortable, Solus has decided to take us through the Fade, right? Because he's a, he's a Fade walker, right? He goes and enjoys walking through the Fade. Is he able to do that? Like, create a location that is familiar to us to make it a comfortable, like, walking trip? I don't know. That's so weird. But that, like, Haven does not look like Haven anymore. So it's immediately just like the only other place that we could be would be the Fade. How long can it take to look at a mark on my hand? A magical mark of unknown origin? Tied to a unique breach in the veil? Longer than you might think. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. I would never have agreed to that. You were in no position to argue. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. The breach threatened the whole world. Where did you plan to go? Some place far away, where I might research a way to repair the breach before its effects reached me. I never said it was a good plan. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resign myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. Hmm. Well, that... I mean, that conf seeing the breach in the sky like that obviously confirms where we, where we are. <laughs> we are not in the real world. Oh! felt the whole world change. A figure of speech. I'm aware of the metaphor. I'm more interested in felt. <laughs> you change everything. Oh, oh, oh shit. Okay. <clears throat> uh oh no, this is the this is the first step. We've just been playfully flirting with everybody. This is the first step. I actually really like that it gives you this instead of like in Dragon Age 2 with Anders. I like made a comment that was like the lesser of two flirts. And then he was like, and he put his tongue in my mouth. And I like that uh, I get to actually make sure that that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, it's just, a, we're just in a dream world. And in a dream world, we can make out with bold people. Sweet talker. Oh, 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 raunchy. Okay. 
We shouldn't. It isn't right. Not even here. What do you mean, even here? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you wake up. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> and weird. So cool and weird, right? That music's nice. It wasn't a real kiss, guys. It was just a wet dream. I've soiled the bed. Oh, that's weird. Isn't that strange, though? Because, like, he's like, let's go somewhere more comfortable. Oh, hang on. <gasps> I do have quarters. Yeah. Oh. oh, yes. Oh, my God. I can change clothes. Thank fuck. Thank God I can change clothes. Okay, so these are like variations of this one. Cool. I can wear formal wear, outerwear, armor. Oh my god, there's so many choices! Look how much I have. A classic formal cut, crimson accented with royal blue, fit to meet royalty. A formal azure sensation, determined to declare war upon and victory over presuppositions. Like a brilliant sunset descending into a cerulean lake, the never-ending dance of fire and water is elegantly captured. And for discerning tastes in formal accoutrements, dark tones and silvery accents evo evoke the wonder and gravity of night skies. Oh my god. I love how, like, my brain is like, oh my god, wardrobe, that I just completely d got distracted and moved on from what we were talking about. Um, I love that she was so oblivious to us being in the Fade and was just, like, casually walking through Haven. It's so clear that she was just enamored with the, with the shiny Megamind that um, she didn't even think to question the fact that the breach was, like, wide open in the sky, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that was cool. He took us on a date in the Fade um, and made it all comfortable for us. And then we shared a romantic kiss. It doesn't count, though, guys, because it wasn't real. Or was it? It was just, I love that he's just, like, that, uh, the attitude of just, like, wake up. And then we just, like, taken straight out of it. But he pulled back a bit. There's a little bit of regret there. He's like, we shouldn't. Uh, not even here, which is very interesting. So he was into it. I don't know if that, like, locks anything in place. Because uh, what stays happens in the fade stays in the fade. But um, we'll see how we go. I still haven't really decided what I want to do romantically. So... I'm just playing. I'm just playing, playing around, you know. I'm just playing around. <laughs> God damn, there are so many more choices here than what I thought. I was like, maybe we'll hopefully be able to like just at least wear our armor or something. But look at all these options. For the inquisitor who wishes to project a can-do hands-on image, a simple, simple rugged number in rich browns, white accents, and a startling red undershirt defy expectations while maintaining a ready, durable style. Somber turns and a heavier coat. Perfect for cold skyhold nights and weighty discussions. Heavy leathers in lighter tones project quiet confidence as they enthrall the eye. Oh, it's like different arms. So I can't even wear my own armor. Be observed, standing at the portals to the Fade, glittering in silver and golden scale accented with green, protected, secured, but never discreet. Simple eternal beige. <laughs> Be above reproach in both manner and dress with his classic style and pattern white, and garb yourself in the rich blues of the masked empire while keeping your ensemble simple and sleek. I love these descriptions, they're great. Alright, I want to have a look at everything that we've got. I wish I could just, like, preview it. Ah, fancy. I wish I could preview it in, like, the menu itself, like a, um, like the inventory for your character, so I don't have to go in and out every time, but I want to see what we've got. So it looks like each tier is kind of the same clothing, but a different color scheme. Yeah. Okay, outerwear. Nice. Which one do I like the most? Yeah, that's the same, but color scheme, right? And then armor. Immortal and eternal. Oh, I like that. 
Where's the green that was mentioned? Is it this sash? Not really a hell of a lot of green there, but it looked like Aquaman. So I need to put something else on. Um, yes. Now I look like I'm part of the X-Men, but like, um, in the 17th century. Cool. Alright, I'll take that. That's better than, it's much better than what I had. I like that we've got choices. Actually, I should probably take a look around. I got a couch. I got a f nice roaring fire. I got recipes. Locate tower materials, okay. Oh man, it wants me to locate a bunch of stuff. For the garden, for the courtyard, for everything. Oh my god, I need just so many things. Okay. Look at this view that I got, baby. Damn. Okay. They have certainly spared no expense. <laughs> yep. It's in here. Oh, we got a ladder. Okay. Up I go. Damn. Got a big old mural up here. Is the Inqu is that the seeker or the Inquisition symbol up there though? Okay. Weird feng shui with my bed. Also, I need a bigger bed. Especially if I'm to have guests. Need a larger bed, guys. Alright, where is my where are my quarters compared to everywhere everywhere else? Got a bunch of birds. Ah, uh, the main hall? Ah, oh, I'm connected to the main hall. Okay. Well, obviously we have to go right back to Oh, you've cleaned the place up a little bit. Nice. While I've been here, too. I can also sit. Okay. Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Oh. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Damn. Do I really need to oversee even more death? I'm nearly at capacity. I share your distaste for more bloodshed, but it needn't come to that. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Uh, not right now. I'm still exploring, but like, it's very interesting that uh, while I had a nap, everybody decided to clean up the place. I'd rather do this another time. At your leisure, Inquisitor. The throne will wait until you are ready. Okay. I thought it was just going to be a cool little funny, haha, I can sit at the throne, but instead, uh, Josephine's like, hey... Are you ready to sit down and maybe kill people? That's the killing chair. Oh, this is so cool to actually see that, like... Uh, it, it is changing. And I thought it would change much, much later, but, like, even just talking with your companions inspires change around the place. Um, I don't know if that changes, like, location of characters, if, uh... No, they're still in the same spots. Okay. Construction report. Request to fight. Workers finishing the banner placements are requesting more important tasks. Several wish to train with swords so they can fight, more directly serving the Inquisition. They travel to join a war, not dress up a keep. Can't say I disagree. Foreman Charisse. Our enemy cut a hole in the sky seen everywhere. We look upon it from below, but it need not humble us. We may fight because we are many. We are many because the Inquisitor inspires. The Inquisitor inspires because of her growing legend. Part of this legend is what the masses find on arrival. This is the job of your workers, not vanity, but veneration. Not impulse, but elevation. Their skill as workers is greater threat to the enemy than their numbers in half-trained soldiers. Okay. And a well... 
Uh, well-worded rejection. All right, hang on. Let's go back. I need to go back to talk to Solus immediately because I need to uh, be like, what was that? And uh, what are we? Word is the courts in Royo are full to burn. You have to ask him if a... If a oh, whoa. A lamb needs whoa. We have to ask him if a fade kiss counts as a real kiss. Damn. Huh. Well, this feels like Corypheus. This feels like Tevinter Magister thing because he's got the ruffles on the on the shoulders. Is this like representative of the blight? Uh, not the blight, the breach in the sky? I don't know what this is. But the horns make me feel like it's Canari, but I don't think so. That's the, this is like this, the, no, hang on. Is this like the Seeker Inquisition symbol or is it something else? Because I'm thinking like, because considering this place is Elven, you'd be like, is this tied to Elver stuff? And then we've got the walls. It was very Star Wars. To me, Star Wars Rebels with like the wolves on the on the murals and stuff. That's cool. We got a bunch of eyes. These are this is cool. Solus, did you paint these walls, or did you get people in here to do this? Sleep well. Uh huh. I've never done anything like that before, on a number of levels. <laughs> I apologize. The kiss was impulsive and ill-considered, and I should not have encouraged it. I put my tongue in your mouth first, so I, I understand. It was kind of my bad. Are you not interested? Oh, interesting. You say that, but you're the one who started with tongue. I did no such thing. <laughs> oh, does it not count if it's only fade tongue? It's been a long time, and things have always been easier for me in the fade. I am not certain this is the best idea. It could lead to trouble. Oh no, I think I, okay, on. Oh, okay. Where's my third option where I say, can I get back to you? I still don't know if I want to ride the horns or not of the bull, but that's okay. This, this, um, this arrangement entices me. I feel, I feel, uh, I feel pulled in this direction because not just because he's an elf, but also mostly because he's an elf. And I just feel like it it feel it it feels quite nice. Also, Elven lore is my favorite thing. But the Canari horns though, they call to me. His wide chest out in the fields right now. And he's out there galloping without a without a woman to lead him. But I, uh, I might have to, I might have to rub the Mega Mind for good luck. I'm willing to take that chance, if you are. I, maybe, yes. If I could take a little time to think, <laughs> there are considerations. Take all the time you need. Thank you. I am not often thrown by things that happen in dreams, but I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. Imagine if he put us in another dream level. We're just like in Inception. He's like, haha, you thought you woke up, but it's another dream. And that's how he escapes conversations. He just goes, wake up. And then we just like wake up somewhere else. <laughs> He's like, I don't wish to talk about this anymore. 
I like that. He's like, yeah, it's just easier for me in dreams, babe. <laughs> in real life, I get a little bit nervous. Uh, but in, in the dream, fade tongue. <laughs> that response is great. Does it not count if it's fade tongue? <laughs> God, that was so unexpected. I was just prepared for some casual dialogue of learning about things, but he was like, here, let's go on a date and make out and then also maybe commit to romance. That happened so fast that I think we're both just like, what just happened? <laughs> I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. What's kind of interesting and also feels a little bit strange is he's like, I was like, can you tell me about yourself? Can we talk? And then we didn't really at all. We didn't talk about him. He just talked about our mark and then the breach and stuff like that. And how he's like, you changed everything. Um, so he wanted to get more comfortable to talk about stuff. But only for that. And now we can just talk to him in here again. It's very interesting. Tell me about old memories. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a savage human horde go marching toward the battlefront. They sang a soldier's hymn to keep formation. The primal music shook the ground. These savage, unwashed warriors carried harmonies no chantry choir has mastered. Though their cause was all but hopeless, they sang songs that made the spirits weep. Oh. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts, who would return their love with gentle kindness. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Mm. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found the ruin of Baron Dua, a lost to winter city very deep beneath the dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes, like a mold made to recall the lost. Such a way with words. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, is this because we gave him a moment to consider things? Okay. Things are moving. Things are moving so fast. I just wanted to talk to you more about things. But I guess we have to do this now. Something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. Okay. Dreaming about me? Weird. What's going, what's going on? He's disturbed. This man is not used to... Romance, it's throwing him off balance. But you don't need anything from anyone. You're known for that. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages, forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. Oh, I'm sorry that I just made that about me. <laughs> I thought it was tied to what we were previously on. This is why things are, like, things are moving so fast. I should have probably just... Uh, put some time between our conversations, I suppose, but I, th I thought I could just freely investigate his next option. This is like what happens when the game like automatically kicks you out of conversation because I probably would have spoken to him about the investigation options and then come back later and then spoken to him and we would have had this conversation normally, but... When your friend was captured, how did he... She... It. It? My friend is a spirit of wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. Spirit of wisdom. I thought spirits wanted to find their way into this world. Some do, certainly. Just as many Orlesian peasants wish they could journey to exotic Ravain. But not everyone wants to go to Ravain. My friend is an explorer seeking lost wisdom and reflecting it. It would happily discuss philosophy with you, but it had no wish to come here physically. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. 
It is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. Mm. Okay, this is very cool. All right, let's go get your friend. Thank you. I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. Okay. I also... Um, he loves when we investigate. Every time you investigate, he's like, I approve of this. All right, can I talk to you normally now? Good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. See, I, I thought that it was just going to go straight into like another, like romance thing because we'd just done that. So I'm glad that it wasn't because I'm not ready for that right now. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Interesting. So these pop up again. Is it the same? Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a dwarf emerge into the light of mm. day and shield his eyes against the sun. The first time he had seen it, the tears were streaming from his eyes. I sought them from the blazing light until I saw the rock he held so tightly. Then he laid the rock down gently and he left it as he walked away. Yeah, because dwarves who leave Orzammar leave behind the stone. Okay, so he has like different things to say about all of these. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. The Alamari crossed the Frostback Mountains to escape a beast they called the Shadow Goddess in their story. I met the spirit that they fled. She walks the fade along the southern tundra, weeping lonely and forgotten. Great for Elden formed because a lonely spirit drove her prey away. Uh, I feel like we gotta keep we gotta keep buttering up the Mega Mind for the lore. I feel like it must be done. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found an ancient dwarven tide no longer sheltered by the stone. An earthquake had exposed it all to daylight. A thousand dwarven corpses lay. The victims of a dark spawn horde. Their last stand marked by one great ring of armor. In the middle, one small body, clutching tightly to a small stuffed toy. We'll talk later. Goodbye. My friend. Friend, huh? I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhawk. What more can I tell you? Cassandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. That was off screen. You've given me good counsel before. I could use some now. My apologies, Inquisitor. My poor manners shame me. I claim no secret wisdom, but I will guess as best I can. Okay. He's quite, like, elusive to that, which is strange. I'm like, you know that Corypheus possesses the uh, elven orb stuff. So obviously I would like to ask the elf with an orb for a head. Because you're obviously related. Orbs think alike, Solus. I would like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast to destroy the Conclave was more accident than anything. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. You said that you believed the orb is elven. I never would have believed that a Vinter Mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities, giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon? Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. Hmm. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. Spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this. No real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. His deception will undo him. As it has done countless fools before. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of the Vinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, 
a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. We'll talk later. Okay. Goodbye. All right. That's that's as much Solar's talk as we'll do for now. God, that just went in a direction I was not expecting. Uh, so there you go. We were like, let's just talk to our companions. And uh, I've had a little bit of a romantic time and we've got some good lore. That's nice. The Rotunda and the Fresco. Sister Leliana, as per your request, I have made a thorough examination of the Fresco adorning the Rotunda. I first attempted to clarify its intent with Messia Solus. Forgive me, I know he is not titled within the structure of the Inquisition, but the more I learn of his experience, the more awkward I feel not using a formal honorific. On the mural, all Messia would say is, Skyhold is her fortress, meaning, of course, the Inquisitor. These are her actions. He is, of course, correct. Ah, the subject of each edition is self-evident. On the medium and method, it is elven fresco, pigment and plaster, and it is grand. I've rarely been privileged to observe such skill as it is applied. It is considered, with long periods of study before the image emerges, whole cloth and with certainty. It speaks of how I imagine elves view the world and the measured nature of their step. I should expect such competence from Miss Seer, given his probable years of study, but it is still an amazing work demonstrating an art with few living practitioners, even among the Dalish. Archivist Bannon. He did do the murals on the wall. Wow. He's an artiste. I love the creative types. Oh, okay. These are her actions. These are her actions. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is Haven. I don't know what the rest mean. Well, that's that. This might be. This is that. Okay. Hmm. And this is Skyhold. Cause uh, maybe. What's I don't know what these are. Especially this. Interesting. Oh, you didn't see that. He didn't see that. He's too busy looking at what to paint on this wall. The only reasonable time an NPC can actually be looking at a wall is because Solus is actually an artiste. Amazing stuff. Okay. Who else we got up here? We got a book. How can't I read this? Hello? Are there any book? Book? No. I book? Alright. Uh, yes, book does not exist. I'll be quick. Of course you will. Why you can't I... Happen. Okay, thank, thank God. You may depart in a moment. For some reason, I can't interact with these books on the shelf. I don't know why. The Randy Dowager Quarterly. Smartly bound quarterly missive of suspect virtue. The Randy Dowager greets the summer with complete obeying her order, being a ribald tale of Templars standing firm before division by a secret cunning. An exhibition of inspiration at its most urgent, and the chant at its most passionate. The Randy Dowager. Exhibitions for the noble of thought, but spry of step. The lady herself says such an assault to modesty that I publicly swooned lest my own honour be impunged. Impugned. Twice, five scarves fluttered in a shock out of five. Greetings to you, Inquisitor. I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. Mm, you replaced Minave. You're taking over the duties of Minave? Yes. She said she was needed elsewhere and that I should serve the Inquisition to the best of my ability. What is she doing? I wasn't told. Weird, okay. You were made tranquil. Yes, I am tranquil. It was necessary due to a willful nature that made wielding magic a dangerous endeavor. I remember that being a difficult time, but I cannot remember why. My skills are well used in my current position. How can you serve the Inquisition? I am to aid in the research of all creatures encountered in your efforts as leader of the Inquisition. What makes you particularly qualified? I remember being fond of animals. I don't remember why. Hmm. 
What is your evaluation of how we're doing? Adequate. Based on a partial improvement to Skyhold. Okay. It's okay. okay. Yes, Inquisitor. Okay. So Minev is doing something. The folly of General Not Sheraton. Uh, four. And so it was that victory was absolute, and cheers were raised for General Not Sheraton. And so buoyed my respect and admiration, Not Sheraton stood proud and removed the mask to state her true name. For had they not accepted her? Had they not thrived by her leadership? Had they not become comrades despite station and masks and nonsense of protocol? And the answer was swift and bewildering, for they had not. And swiftly she was bundled away amid calls of imposter and spy and other terms she could not know, for she still did not know or lay. Yes, Fiona's here. The Veil. I detest this notion that the Veil is some manner of invisible curtain that separates the world of the living from the world of the spirits. Whether it be called the Fade or the Beyond is a matter of, uh, matter of racial politics I refuse to indulge in at the moment. There is no this side and that side when it comes to the veil. One cannot think of it as a physical thing or a barrier or even a shimmering wall of holy light. Thank you very much for that image, your perfection. Think of the veil instead as opening one's eyes. Before you opened them, you saw our world as you see it now, static, solid, unchanging. Now that they are open, you see our world as the spirits see it, chaotic, ever-changing, a realm where the imagined and the remembered have as much substance as that which is real. More, in fact. The spirit sees everything as defined by will and memory, and this is why they are so very lost when they cross the veil. In our world, imagination has no substance. Objects exist independently of how we remember them or what emotions we associate with them. Mages alone possess the power to change the world with their minds, and perhaps this forms the nature of a demon's attraction to them. Who can say? Regardless, the act of passing through the veil is much more about changing one's perceptions than a physical transition. The veil itself is an idea. It is the act of transition itself, and it is only the fact that both living beings and spirits find the transition difficult that gives the veil any credence as a physical barrier at all. From a dissertation on the fade as a physical manifestation by Moreno, senior enchanter of the Minrathus Circle of Magi. Interesting. Fiona, what do you have to say after all of this? Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I knew you, of all people, would understand. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now... I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you are no doubt well aware. How long ago was she a Grey Warden? Cause she, is she going to feel the, the calling at any point? You were once a Grey Warden. Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally one is part of the Order until death. But long ago I found myself stripped of what made me a Warden. They tried to reinitiate me. But nothing worked, nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. Huh. That's really weird. And I know that this is like a moment where everybody goes, read the books, Mopocalypse, because I'm aware that Fiona's in the books, I think, with Duncan in, in one of the books, so... Eventually, one day, probably, but not while I'm playing the games. <laughs> That'll be extracurricular activities. Um, very interesting. So she answered my question. There you go. I was like, "Isn't aren't you going to die at some point? There must be some sort of explanation for that instead of just, huh, don't know why that happened. Because that's pretty significant. Because, like, to be honest, that... Like, that's hugely significant, because if she could figure out what happened and how it happened, you would be able to effectively maybe adjust or play around with the, you know, the ritual itself, or maybe avoid the calling. 
or just do something about it to but then I guess she also found out that you can't do the ritual again so they probably wouldn't be able to sense Darkspawn it would maybe diminish their ability to be a Grey Warden so it seems you can't have your cake and eat it too I guess but that's very curious you sound happy about it Becoming a warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter, then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected? If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is, and what she offers. We can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's Conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask. How exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers. Most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended far worse. Yeah, desperate alliance that she clearly regretted after being manipulated. I'm a little bit disappointed that I can't ask her about our encounter in Valrio and what happened there. Maybe if I could talk to her. I mean, she probably have no idea because she didn't even know that she invited us. But I, I wished I could, I guess, mention it. I want to talk to her about other things as well, like Vivian... I want to know more about her Grey Warden history without having to read the book right away. <laughs> but, you know, I guess you can't have everything. But she's a very um, curious character as a result of her achievements. I trust everything as well with the mages. There have been a few scuffles with your Templars. But overall, it is going well. I'll leave you to it. I'll leave you to it. Why can't I read these books on the shelf? God damn it. Maybe they'll happen later. I don't know. They're secret books. I can't read them yet. Uh, we got Dorian here as well. Uh, Dorian's here and then Leliana, I guess, is um, up above even higher. All the artwork looks really high quality though, like just shit that's like tucked away in the corner. It's like not blurry or pixelated at all. It looks so good. Like the this game is very, very pretty. It's a very beautiful game. A lot of details and everything. Construction report, surfacing, paint, plaster, paint, plaster, tile, plaster, stone. Previous occupants have redressed over and over. Most are solid. Some I would strip down to the stone. The strength of this place is the foundation. Are we here for the long term or is the Inquisition temporary? Arm cell. Do it right. The Inquisition is only temporary if we fail. and We're not failing the Inquisitor. Sir Morris. Okay. So I guess we'll see maybe these doors behind maybe open up at some point later. But right now they're doing construction so we can't go over there. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? 
No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? <laughs> oh, God. You don't need to worry about me. I can keep up. Yes, I noticed that. Did you know? Certainly. If you were a slack-jawed yokel, you'd already be dead. I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters, a dark spawn. One of those very magisters that's responsible for everything in our current state of living. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus <laughs> is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. Last I checked, the Blights hadn't actually destroyed the world. Not for lack of trying. If they were more clever, They'd have unleashed something that would really do the job. <laughs> no one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? That attitude must be why they kicked you out of the Imperium. <laughs> they didn't kick me out? Well, only because they never got around to it. Eventually, they might have. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. I thought he was literally just about to walk off without saying anything, and that would have been so funny. <laughs> He's just like, off he goes. He's going to go stare at the table. I like how Dorian was like instantly likable. Very much instantly likable. Come back. So I take it you're Dalish? Is that the correct word here? <laughs> okay. The camera angle is pushed up against the wall. Can't get us both in shot, so. It's now an immersive first-person dialogue. Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. I like that he's at least open with things that he's just like, look, I come from a shitty place, but I am not shitty people for the most part, as I try not to be. And also I acknowledge the things that I am not really used to or aware of. He kind of handles those subjects in a really good way. There's no need for us to dredge up the past, is there? More than it's already been. What with ancient magisters running about? Not at all. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Popular topic. Anything specific? Oh, nice. So it's added another thing for us now. Corypheus is a figure out of Tevinter history. He was a magister. Yes, but that was a different time. The Imperium's power was at its peak then. The Civil War had ended. The Magisterium was united, its armies scooping up bits of Thedas like candy. The Magisters who entered the Black City it was a demonstration of how exceptional Tevinta had become. But who were they? No one knows. There's no record of a magister named Corypheus. All this happened 1400 years ago, before the Blight nearly wiped us out. 
There are no records. Today, people half believe it's all just a story. That's what I believed. Mm. We have evidence the story is very much real. But not who Corypheus is. If he even remembers. There used to be families who claimed some of those magisters as their own. That stopped when the Chantry appeared. Then it was shameful, and the families distanced themselves from the tale. All we know is that some men and women entered the Black City looking for the old gods. What did they find? According to Corypheus, nothing. And only he could tell us more. I hope we can convince Corypheus to do some more villainous grandstanding so he can give us information. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I should go. Try not to kill anyone without me. Okay. Um, okay, we gotta head up another level. So I can get to Liliana, I think. Um, how do I get up further? Yeah. One day I'm oh. going to read all these books. One day, when I have time. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. Right, Liliana. On the condition of your charges, dear Liliana, you'll be happy to learn that your friends are doing well. Schmooples the second is still unhappy about his meal plan and tries to get into the pantry. I have had to bolt had to have a bolt installed and now he whines constantly. The two little ones are still a handful, but good news. I've managed to discourage Boulet from relieving herself on the silk rug Justinia gave you. Uh, Felicienne from Two Doors Over has been visiting almost every day to play with the Nugs. She is quite delightful and Schmooples the second is fond of her. I suspect it is because she brings him sweets from her father's shop. I had to ask her governess to keep her from visiting the house. However, someone tried to infiltrate it two nights ago, an agent of one of the Blanchards. Uh, Blanchards? Blanchards? Hoping to uncover some of the Nightingale's secrets, I neutralized and interrogated him. His ability to withstand questioning was deplorable. Someone needs to talk to the Blanchards about their spies. All I had to do was put Schmoople's the second in his face and tell him what I hadn't fed the creature that day. Your pet played his part admirably. I received your orders and will depart for Ferelden as soon as possible. I have arranged for Garda to take over Nug keeping. Sparrow. <laughs> Liliana and her Nugs. That's funny. <sighs> A little spy tower. Note found in Skyhold's rookery. Sadler. Baron Plucky. I don't care how many missions he's flown on uh, or how many lives his actions have saved. He is a holy terror. Nearly pecked out my eye the last time I tried to attach a message to him. All the dramatic flapping and squawking caused the sister to come over. You should have seen her look when she snatched the letter from me. If I had a weaker constitution, it might have killed me on the spot. I suppose she thought I was trying to murder her prized raven. And all she had to do was coo at him and the Baron hopped onto her shoulder all sweetness and nestled into her neck. How does she do it? All the birds like her. Is it blood magic? It's blood magic, isn't it? Weaver. I can keep examining that, and that is a problem. I don't like that. Don't let me keep being able to examine something, otherwise I won't be able... I, I like not knowing... I like not being confused by notes. I'm going to come up here and be like, oh, there's a note that I missed. <laughs> a fine time to be to close a border. The news is dire. There are rumors that our warden brothers and sisters in Ferelden have all perished. Without the Grey Wardens, the Blight will take Ferelden. Then it will undoubtedly spread. It will go north to Navarra and the marches. It will come west to Olay. At the head will be an archdemon, and in its wake will come thousands upon thousands of Darkspawn. We must be ready to stare squarely into the eyes of Oblivion. Many of you have asked why we remain here when such threats are mounting in the east. Problem, you see, is not a new one for us, politics. To say Ferelden and Olay have been at odds and is, a, is an understatement. These two are like dogs and cats. We wardens are our legion by address only, but that does not seem to matter to Ferelden's leaders. Word is that the king of Ferelden is dead, and his successor, Logain Mactia, decrees that no wardens set foot in the country. Mactia, a national hero who helped expel or invading Olesian forces from Ferelden, seems to have it out for our order too. Maybe he doubts our abilities. Maybe he is more foolish than the history books make him out to be. This is why we must wait, even as Ferelden willingly welcomes its fate. An address by Warden Constable Blackwall of Valshevan to his recruits in the 30th year of the Dragon Age.
Huh. Many of you have asked why we remain here. So Blackwall's lying. Why did he say he's he was in Ferelden during the blight? Warden Constable Blackwall of Val Shevin to his recruits. He's lying. And it already seems suspicious because I was like, why are you there? Because uh, we, <laughs> we were there and you were not. We had a, uh, we had Riordan come in instead. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know why that note's going to stay there. That's a little bit annoying. I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. Damn, these these things are so terrible. Like, <laughs> whenever you look at the third option, you're like, holy crap. How could I play a game like that? We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. More likely, they would have stayed out there, died, and we would have lost Haven anyway. You don't know that. Their lives could have bought Haven a small chance. My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus... We are better than Corypheus. <laughs> True. Exactly. At your service, my lady. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh. You are referring to my outburst in the Haven. I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend and... There were so many things going wrong. Mm. Things going wrong? I'm shocked. <laughs> I was there when the hero Ferelden defeated the Archdemon. We won the day, and I thought the Maker smiled on me. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now, Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You were grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. <laughs> Anything I should know? It seems that the Olesian army is awaiting our next move. Some of the generals are sympathetic to our cause, others are still suspicious. Our actions are under a great deal of scrutiny. I'll leave you to your work. Wonderful, okay. I'll leave you to your work. There's a lot of balconies. Can I just jump off here and go to the bottom? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. Expect either a, a death or a, or a uh, fade to black, or an invisible wall, maybe. All right, we've quick saved. Oh, oh okay. Are you gonna, are you gonna let me do it? Wow, wow, wow! Parkour. Okay, that's amazing. The game will let me um, plummet all the way to the bottom. With that in mind, then, okay. That makes traversal so much more fun. <laughs> I I tried to break my fall on something else, but now I don't need to. Straight to the bottom. I don't need you, sister. You're carrying a heavy burden for one so young. 
I'll carry it back to Crestwood and kill those bandits. That's what Father would have wanted. He'd want you to live a good life. He's dead. You didn't know him. Did I drop in at a bad time? All right, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> I've just fallen down over here. I'm near where Cullen is, the forgotten boy, and I got some merchants. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, Bonnie's was uh, in Valreo, right? Lady Inquisitor, Bonnie seems at your service. I trust good secret was not too coarse. Now that you've come to some good fortune, you deserve an upgrade. As master of the tradesmen, I stand ready to supply your every need. Who or what are the tradesmen? A following of sympathetic and profit-minded individuals who promote local craftsmen and fair importers. A guild of sorts. Although that implies counter affiliations, we are not interested in crossing. <laughs> Our purpose in the Inquisition is legitimate and honorable. You will have what you need at honest prices. Segret survived Haven. Where is he? About. Doing good work for you and yours. But this position is now more desirable. It was time arrangements were made. I shall make every effort to prove that this is an upgrade. So we've got like people that we saved, but then they're still not around. They've been replaced anyway. Why are you a mere merchant if you're the master of this group? I wish to avoid the suggestion that I am a posturing commander atop a structure of malcontents. It is better to remain active, hands-on. Do you not agree, Inquisitor? <laughs> what do you bring to the Inquisition? What you need, and more. It takes great coordination to make a remote location seem central. While there is no doubt the boutiques of Val Royale display the grandest of the grand, they do not travel. At least, not yet. We'll speak another time. Of course, Lady Inquisitor. We'll speak another time. Perfect. Okay, well, I've just dropped into a random place in Skyhold, and this place is still quite large. Uh, so expect a lot of exploration as we go through here. Like I said, we want to check out all of the characters that are in here and get familiar with this location. So we will be doing more of that next time as well. So we'll also maybe sit in judgment of someone as well. That'll be an interesting one. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for our first episode of proper Skyhold exploration. We'll talk to more of our companions and have another look around uh, in the next episode. Uh, as well as these uh, quests that are lying around for us to look into as well. Like, uh, I think there's we've got Cole, the Forgotten Boy. Uh, we've got Judgment. So there's a few things to do, and there'll probably be some more surprises. Maybe, and hopefully not, as many surprises like people putting their tongues in my mouth like we just did today with uh, Solus on a dreamy date, but we'll see how we go. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time.